This is Ray's magnetic cannon. First of all, I'll give you the dimensions. This is the dimensions of the firing mechanism. I'm looking to see if there may be any over unity results. That means more power out than in. This is self setting. And then it fires. So my input I'm calling this. The output, the firing, is considered that. We'll go into measurements and if we can see that this part of the cycle is less force needed compared to the output then according to my viewing we would have over unity results so we'll come back here in just a little bit okay we're gonna see what the value for the loading of this half cycle We'll go ahead and start uh, pulling it out. This uh, meter is good to 1.1.1 ounce. Okay. I could not detect 0.1 ounce. So we'll go ahead and set up for the other half cycle. Okay, we're set up for the second half of the reset cycle leading up to the firing point. The uh, digital meter again is good to 0.1 ounce. So either half cycle is getting rid of the fire there. It uh, may even, when it fires, sometimes it'll go negative. Let's see. Um, hitting. There we go. Okay. It went negative <clears throat> 1.4 ounce. That's cause that jolt makes a vibration through the string. Instead of positive, it must uh, push the other direction. So it's a negative 1.4, but really it's, it'd just be zero. Uh, or it's less than one, <clears throat> it's less than the one point one uh, ounce. Okay, Let's see if we can get that so it doesn't jolt there at the end. We'll go up to the firing point because we know that it doesn't take much to fire it. I can just get it so it doesn't go negative. Yeah, still going negative. But you can see that it's less than the uh, plus 0.1. So uh, that's leading up to the firing. So now we're going to get ready and see what the firing forces are. Okay, we're going to measure the uh, output forces. I hit the side there. Try that again. About four. It's about four. Somewhere in 
there. Okay. So we're having four ounces output. If we say that the input, you have to calculate the distance and thing, but it did not show up on the 0.1 ounce. Let's just say it's 0.1. 0.1 amount of force for resetting input and the output is 4 ounces. That's like 0.1 penny for putting the input but the output you're getting uh, 4 cents out. So that's about a 40 times over unity the way I look at it. But uh, I encourage you to make one of these and uh, come to your own conclusions, of course. I'm going to do another experiment. Here I have a setup. I put a little piezoelectric speaker there. And when it uh, has a force against it, it puts out a charge or a voltage. So let's see what happens. Remember our input is very, very, very low. But our output is enough to light our LEDs. Quite a little bit of a hit on that poor little piezoelectric. It got dense on the other side. Uh, LEDs, they fire around 2 volts, somewhere around there, roughly. So, uh, this is a little, explain this little guide bar. It's made out of brass. Just enough to catch it on the return so it's on the opposite side as it comes in. You can see it's hitting pretty good force there. It'll light up the four LEDs but they're not as bright. Okay we're going to finish off with the car again. I encourage you to make some of these. This is scalable. This is just one magnet on there. Also, uh, I use tubing, three quarter inch square tubing. You can use solid bars also. Okay, we'll come back and finish up with comments. I want to give some construction details, might help you out. As I explained, these are 3 4 inch square tubing or solid. The magnetic forces keep all these things together. These are quite important. These are the uh, blades that I call them an extension blade. They, if you notice, everything's broken up. It was at an angle. So what you want to do is break this north south. Uh, in there, there's very strong fields and it locks up your rotors. So if you have it at a little bit of an angle, that makes the vectors a little bit different and it helps not lock up the rotor. The extension plates, they draw up the field again. So it kind of purifies this field that comes out here. Some people call them monopoles. But, uh, and then when you have a right angle like that, it again breaks up that continuity and brings up just the north face more than the south. So that's why I have this square construction and so forth. Uh, this bar here helps it reset. So this is your reset system here. This is your firing system here. These are your plates. The same thing on the extension plate here. It brings that one field down more more than the other kind of more of a pure field monopole so we'll go ahead and fire this up again and see as I put it in there it increases so uh, by bringing the extension field up higher that uh, 
makes it stronger also. Okay, let's make sure we're level here on the board. Set it up there. Uh, I have about a four foot board. So this is a, a fun thing. It can come to your own conclusion. I came to mine and I think it's worth investigating more. Okay in there. That's just pretty close in there. Okay. A lot of patience needed. Okay. That wasn't quite against the firing pin or the rotor. Let's get it back up in there better. Set it right, right against it now. So it has the full force of the output rotor. There we go. So you can see that this does operate and takes very, very little forces to load it. And yet the output force is much more perhaps 40 to 1. And that's a, that's a pretty good uh, ratio there. Most things I used to make uh, really were kind of just on the borderline, which I think they were still valid, but this is the first setup that I've had that really shows, you know, the amount of power is uh, quite evident. So thank you for watching. I hope you make some of these. Uh, they're pretty simple in construction. It does take a lot of uh, patience uh, to get everything just right and uh, so forth. Thank you for watching and we'll see you another time.